Happy New Year, everyone. I just returned from like a five day trip. And if you remember from last week, I sprayed the trunk area of the Bahama yellow and I was anxious to look at it when I got home. And the good news is everything looks good. Garage time. As I mentioned before, there's a run on the sidewall here, and I was gonna work on that today, but in the grand scheme of things, it's hardly noticeable. It's in the trunk area. I'll come back to it later after I get the whole car painted, because there's probably gonna be more runs then to fix too. I wanted to put the wheels and tires back on so I can move the car around. I'm gonna need some space to work on the hood and all these other parts now that they're off the car. So I'll probably push this outside. Plus I bolted the struts back in. You know, this car is gonna get trailered to the paint booth and I don't want anything, you know, breaking or coming loose on the road. Okay, I got the door off, uh, didn't go exactly according to plan. I thought I could use my tool with the door closed and that made it a little safer, you know, working alone to uh, prevent the door from crashing into the rocker. I did put some tape down on the rocker. It's kind of thin. I put a little bit on the door as well, but uh, I did get the pins loose. And what I try to do on this is I try to replace the pins. As I pull them out, I replace them with something smaller. And then I put tape underneath this right here. So as this pin goes in, the tape holds it. See a little bit of tape left on this one. And then that allows me to um, open the door, pull the tape and then pull the door out at the same time. But I got stuck on this one. I hadn't pulled this pin out far enough. And so it was just hanging up on the bottom. And so I had to use the tool again to extract it from the inside. And uh, it's a little more risky on the inside because you got the weight of the door sort of sticking out. And then it's easier to kind of scratch the paint on this side. So I got it out, but uh, just so you guys know, I think it's a useful tip to use the tape and a smaller pin as you work on it or just get a helper. I probably could have had a helper. Also, these hinges are rebuilt with new bushings. Um, I had some extra stock of hinges and I ended up finding some good bushings out of older cars like passenger doors probably. And so I took the best of all the hinge bushings I had and put them into my hinges. So there's no slop whatsoever in the hinges. That's really important when you're setting the door gaps and putting together a painted car. You don't want any slop in these hinges. And another piece of good news is um, this portion here, which the driver's side was all dented in, this passenger side looks much better. This is kind of pristine, um, no dents, no major you know, problems with the door jam here little scuffed in some areas, but this is overall better than the driver's side. 
Remember a while back ago, a way long time ago, I replaced some of this rocker. This rocker was um, crunched in the crash. So this is a weld right here. From here forward, it's been sort of cut and fixed and put back in place. This is the original part, but I welded it back on after I straightened it out. So there's some welds here, some welds here. Normally this is seam sealer, but I actually put weld in there. And then all this has been reconstructed with a little bit of lead here in the corner. So the rocker looks good. Okay, here's a close up of the door jam area. I dug out some of the seam sealing here, which was cracked and a little bit of rust underneath there, a little rust in that corner. Um, so this needs to be, you know, sanded and cleaned up since a little bit of the filler oozed into this area. So it's a little too tall right here. Down here, this is where there's a little bit of lead where these two panels join together. And I dug out some seam sealer in here. Time for more sanding. Before it gets too dark, I thought I would come out here and work on the hood. Uh, this is the underside, and this is the extension that I added with this rib in here, and it's been a while. It's got a little bit of uh, surface rust on there, so I'm gonna be um, cleaning that up and uh, putting some epoxy primer on it before I really start preparing the underside uh, for paint. This may not need to be fully coated in primer because it's got some factory paint on it that looks okay, but uh, first things first, take the rust out.
This might take me a little while to get this old sound deadening off of here. I just don't want to do anything too harsh because the other side is finished, ready for paint. So I'm just taking it slow, adding a little bit of heat. Uh, I want to replace this material with something a little bit more modern um, that you know actually works better and maybe isn't so heavy. So that's why I'm taking it out. I'm going to be finishing all the um, underside of this. You can see where I did some hammer and dolly work on here. This is all chipped, chipped up. So also up here, you can tell where I've made some modifications. So really just trying to you know, make all this presentable. This is the area that was cleaned off due to lead. So all this lead and the extra filler in here needs to be smoothed out. Now that the gap is set, just need to kind of smooth everything out and make it look nice. Yeah, that was about 35 minutes of non-stop scraping. It did come out pretty clean. I took it outside for a little bit and I used some xylene to help soften up the, um, the tar paper or whatever that stuff is. And that really seemed to help. Plus I got the glue residue off. Um, I did that outside with gloves and my respirator because it's pretty nasty stuff. And I tried not to catch it on fire, but uh, it's really nice. I, you can see a couple little diggers where the uh, blade went a little deep, but in general, this is the factory primer and there's no rust underneath it. So that is good news. At least it's over with now.
Yeah, this is the so-called soft edge method where you kind of roll the tape. That's just there to minimize the amount of overspray that gets on the body. And I am using a different color so that when I do sand it off, it'll be clear as to where um, it was before I did this little jam area. So that's just to try to control the overspray. No big deal if you get a little overspray on the outside, there's still more sanding to do. But that's, uh, that's what I'm up to. Just mix up some paint and it's time to put it on. Okay, the next step is to look for any imperfections in the primer and fill it with a little bit of the U-Pole uh, Dolphin Glaze. And that will fill up any kind of scratches or divots in the, in, the, um, in the paint. So when I sand it for the final time, it'll be ready for the base coat. So let me show you up close. This is after the first coat of the epoxy primer and you can just kind of see, you know, little pinholes, little divots here and there. That's what's easy to fill with the Dolphin Glaze. And then this will be ready for the final paint. This lower section right here doesn't really matter because it gets covered with a piece of rubber. Like you can see, there's the weld right there. I'm just going to kind of leave that alone. I'm not going to fill anything here. But there are some, you know, things in the bottom here. This, I think, is visible. So these will get filled up with a little bit of the, uh, the dolphin glaze. This is just the tape. This panel here came out pretty nice. It doesn't really need much work except for right here on the edge where some of the filler, when I was applying filler to the outside, some of it does get on here and it just needs to be smoothed out a little bit, create a nice transition. Same thing on this lower edge on the door. It just needs a little bit of um, extra sanding, a little bit more of the pinhole filler. And then this is the underside of the hood, and this piece is homemade. You know, this is an extension added onto the short hood. So this is handmade. It's got a lot of hammer marks in it. This needs to have a skim coat of filler, and then filled, and then sanded smooth, so it looks, it looks smooth like the rest of the hood. And then this portion of the hood is just going to get um, a light sand and just paint right over this existing paint. The inside of this hood is in pretty good condition. There's only one spot here that is kind of worn through in the undercoating. I'm not sure why that is, but I'll probably touch that up with just maybe a brush or something before I shoot it again with the uh, base coat. 
Here's some examples of just defects in the surface. That can be filled up with a uh, U-pole. Okay, unfortunately, the epoxy primer needs to dry at least 24 hours before you can put any kind of filler over the top of it. And I got a late start this week because it was a holiday week, so unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do any more. But I am going to work over the weekend because it's getting really close to, um, you know, getting this thing uh, painted. So I have a little more work to do on the driver's door and um, a little bit more work to do on the deck lid where I put some filler but it's all just the, uh, the final details. I will be shooting a, 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 a sealer coat over the car and then I'm driving it over to the paint booth. So um, next week's video might be late. I don't know that I'm gonna get the uh, spot in the paint booth next week, but fingers crossed. Take care guys.